Hey Refuge, hope you guys are doing well. As we go through the church season of Eastertide, we are taking a look back at some of the passages about Jesus' resurrection and what happened after in order to celebrate. And today I will be reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. This is the story of Jesus with the two men on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with one another, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this has taken place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they were approaching the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So we learn from this passage that this event takes place the same day that Jesus rose from the dead, so Resurrection Sunday. And we see that people who had been followers of Jesus or kind of on the fringes of following Jesus were wondering about what was going on. They thought that Jesus might have been the Messiah, but they weren't really sure. And now they had seen him killed and he had said something about three days, but now it was three days since he had been killed and they weren't sure what was going on. So we get to see some of the process of what Jesus' disciples were going through after they saw this man whom they had followed, who they had believed to be the Messiah, the Son of God, after they had seen him killed. And in their experience, and in all of our experience, dead people stay dead. But there was still something they still weren't quite sure what was going on. So Jesus, in um, a frankly hilarious mix of mock uncertainty and um, politeness almost. He, he walks with them and he asks them, what are you talking about? You know, what things can you explain to me? What's going on here? What are you discussing? And eventually they, they explain the things that they have seen. Jesus says, okay, okay, okay. And then he says that they are foolish of heart and slow to believe. And he explains that all of the scriptures up to that point have been talking about Jesus and that all of the scriptures have to be fulfilled. So something really interesting at this point in the story is we can see how Jesus viewed the entirety of the Hebrew Bible and the entirety of the Hebrew scriptures that in some way or another, they were telling the story of this anointed one, this representative who would come, this Messiah who would come, who would suffer and be raised from the dead in order to make a new way known to humanity. And he says that all of these events had taken place just as they were talked about in the Hebrew Bible. And eventually the two men are able to recognize him. They, are, they actually recognize him when he breaks the bread in their presence. The last time he did that was at the Last Supper. So they can see this connection. And as soon as they recognize him, he disappears. 
So a couple points of application that we can take from this passage. The first is in how we read the Bible itself. A lot of times we might look at the Old Testament as just a bunch of examples to follow or not follow or confusing or misleading statements or a story about a people group who isn't relevant to us. But Jesus in this passage indicates that he saw the entirety of scriptures as pointing to himself. And so we can, when we read the Old Testament, when we read what Jesus would have had as his Hebrew Bible, we can see the overall story and how everything, everything has pointed to Jesus. The second thing that we can see is that um, Jesus' death and resurrection were necessary and planned in advance. This was not a surprise to God or to Jesus himself. He, this was in fact why he came. He came into the world to die, to be raised again in order that we might be saved and in order that he might be glorified. So all of these things, even though it seemed like the worst case scenario and there was no way that this good could come of this, this was all planned in advance and it was all part of God's great plan to restore the ultimate way that things were meant to be as we talk about uh, on Sunday mornings. So we can think about even the, the difficult times in our life, nothing is a surprise to God. Nothing is out of his plan or beyond his control. So for, for Jesus, these things were necessary. Potentially for us, our hard times are necessary as well. But in any case, we can see um, the third point of application that I want to bring up is that Jesus' death and resurrection are historical fact and they give us hope. So the, the men, the two men on the road to Emmaus, when they realized who Jesus was, they immediately returned. They found the disciples. They started rejoicing. Later on in this same chapter, Jesus is going to appear to his disciples and essentially do the same thing with them, taking them back through the Old Testament and explaining how everything up until this point has pointed to him. So it, it changed them immediately. Their focus, their perspective, everything was changed as a result of the resurrection. And ours is too. Even in the midst of a pandemic and quarantine, a lot of the things that I have seen are about our hope in a restored economy or a hope in a vaccine or a hope in any one of these things that ultimately will not stop us from experiencing death as humans, whether it comes sooner or later. The reality is that all of us are living in this fallen and broken world and our hope is not to be found in something temporary, something that may save us for a little while longer, whether that's medicine, whether that's money, whether that's any number of things. But our hope is in the resurrection. And we know from Jesus' resurrection that this life is not all there is. And that is where our hope lies. Because if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. But the reality is, is that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. The entirety of the scriptures pointed forward to the Messiah's death and resurrection. So we know that this is true and we know that it matters in our lives. So I hope and I pray that we can be like these, these two men from Emmaus or on the road to Emmaus who were willing to listen to Jesus, who were willing to hear what the scriptures had to say about him and who were willing to drop everything and completely change their direction because they recognize the reality of the resurrection.